Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our series, I Remember Zahra, a series dedicated to remember the surroundings and the oppressions of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. I'm your host, Dual Makhzumi. Before I start, I would like to send my condolences to you all on the martyrdom of Lady Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam and to our Imam, may Allah hasten his reappearance. I would like to also introduce my guest today, Fahima Muhammad, who is a life coach. So, salam alaikum and welcome to our show, Fahima. Alaykum salam, thank you for having uh, me. Today we'll be talking about uh, Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam mm -hmm. and uh, the oppression she went through and the violence that she had experienced from the enemies. Um, and relating it to modern days in uh, how women today and men today are experiencing violence from all around the world. So let's start first uh, to talk about Fatima al-Zahra and let our viewers know what she went through and who is Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. If it wasn't for the day that she got attacked and uh, experienced this violence, I think today we wouldn't see any violence happening around the world. But um, Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam is uh, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And she is the daughter of Lady Khadija. Lady Khadija was the first lady who believed in the Prophet as a messenger. She is the wife of Imam Ali alayhi salam, and she is the daughter of two Imams, Al Hassan wal Hussein. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Fatima al Zahra, Sayyidat Nisa al Alameen. Fatima is the leader of all women by all times. And when he said that, he knows Fatima al Zahra was the perfect leader. From all the verses in the Quran that speak about women, Fatima was the perfect role model. She translated every verse into action. And uh, she, was a, she was perfect in everything and complete in everything as a mother and as a wife and as a daughter. So when we come and look at what happened to her as being the leader, as being a lady, the daughter of the Prophet and the Prophet said that Fatima is the leader. Fatima is my daughter. Then you see that in such a day on her martyrdom, she has been attacked. And the reason and the way how she has been attacked as a lady, let's talk about her being a woman. Mm -hmm. Like if it was a man, that would be another point of view. But as her being a woman and she was in her home, that man, Umar ibn al-Khattab, attacked at Fatima. If you read in the book Al-Imam Al-Tabari, it mentions that he came along accompanying him 300 men. Imagine a lady who's 18 years old of age. She's in her home. Umar ibn al-Khattab accompanies her with 300 men and knocks on the door. Now before they set the door on fire, Umar knocks the door. Fatima al-Zahra does not open the door. She stands behind the door. And what does she tell him? She asks who's behind the door. He tells her, open the door, I want Ali. So she does not welcome him in. What does he do? He breaks the door, he snaps it open, and he feels her behind the door. Because Fatima al Zahra, she was wearing hijab. Mm -hmm. It's just that she wasn't covering her face and she didn't want him to see her. So what she did is she stood behind the door. He, Umar felt Fatima. So he squeezed her hard. One of his companions told him, Fatima war al bab, Fatima is behind the door. He said, What if? And he squeezed her again. Umar says, When I squeezed her, anna anna kada qalbi an yaleen. She griefed a grief that my heart was softened. I remembered what Ali did to us in the Battle of Badr. So, what did he do? He took revenge. He said, I squeezed the door harder on her until I heard her ribs crack. Now this is part of what happened to Fatima al-Zahra salam and part of the violence. There are more. However, we don't want to take so much time and we want to connect it to the violence that we see today that's going around between men and women abusing men abusing women and the evilness that we see. Now there is nothing a comparison to what happened to Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. But you as a life coach, mm -hmm. you've known and you've seen many women today that are being abused and are experiencing violence from men against them. 
So what are your experiences and what have you seen today that um, there are so many violence against women? Well, first and foremost, I would like to say that with life coaching, it is not seen as therapy. But women come to me with regards to this because it's actually a way of moving forward. Mm -hmm. And violence is um, a short term and a long term effect psychologically. And there has to be an understanding that, you know, uh, these women that come for life coaching is because they want to move you know, forward with their lives. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even the situation doesn't change, but it's about changing their psychology and trying to make the best of the situation that they're in because a lot of the times they're in families mm -hmm. and they're in from, you know, uh, cultural backgrounds, which are, you know, it's very difficult for them to actually speak out. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm making it more aware that, you know, people do need to seek help outside their communities and families so that they can seek the best help for themselves psychologically mm -hmm. because it's okay to sort of put things to one side and you know just you know carry on an, on autopilot with regards to still being the wife and the mother but if you don't deal with your issues then it can only escalate so, so here Fatima Tizara alayhi salam as you say you need to take it out you need yes. to tell someone to Fatima Tizara alayhi salam did not want to go to Imam Ali and tell him what happened because yes. she knew that there was a amr, a command from Rasulullah, mm -hmm. Ya Ali, usbur, be patient, Ali. Do not take your revenge right now. So she didn't want to go tell him because she knows that he's being patient. Yep. So Fatima is Zahra, and she couldn't go to her Hassan and Hussein, Zainab, you know. Of course not. They're her children. So what she did, every night she would go to the grave of Rasulullah. Oh Rasulullah, who, whom? Have you loved Fatima for? Oh Rasulullah, this is what happened to me. Oh Rasulullah, this is what happened to me. She used to weep day and night until the tree that she used to sit under so that the sun won't come on her, they chopped it off so that Fatima will not fun. come again. Mm. So as you said, like even that, they tried to not allow Fatima to Zahra to do, to take it out from her heart, even though Rasulullah wasn't present at the time. But going to his grave and complaining, it's like talking to a therapist. Yes, I was about to say that. Mm -hmm. It was some sort of like, you know, therapy and it was some sort of guidance and you have to let things out. Mm -hmm. and as much as we, m we might want to rate or rate, uh, relate to Fatima to Zahra, we, you know, we cannot relate to that extent. But things right. are happening today, which is quite uh, detrimental because the same sort of customs are still being, you know, practiced. Where you know women do not speak outside them, you know, right. the family or you know, or just let things be. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of like, you know, um, people that are really scared of how they're going to be looked upon if they actually address these issues. Mm -hmm. So they kind of deal with it and it's psychologically damaging in the long term, not just for themselves, but for the rest of the family, the relationships, and they might not even see it coming, but it does actually affect their surroundings and their environment. So it's really important that you know the conditions and your rights. Mm -hmm. And if it's not being abided, then, you know, you need to take steps towards it. And it's not to say that you have to leave your home, but, you know, both parties or whoever's involved needs to be made aware mm -hmm. that this is not right and you have to speak out. So say that, that any woman that's being abused today speaks out and um, give us an example to a story that has happened to you or someone who has came to you as a life coach and mentioned her being abused and what has happened, just so that we can know that if she speaks out, will this help the evil people to stop doing what they do, to stop hurting, using violence against female? Mm -hmm. Well, the, I'll give you one scenario. Um, I would say that majority of the time it's women in marriages mm -hmm. and normally it's after years of marriage that their partners do not see them in the same light. So um, I find that they come to me because it's not so much even the physical violence, but it's the mental abuse. And that can be much more damaging because they're actually made to feel that they are actually wrong when they're not. Mm -hmm. So then that's actually more, um, I think, harming to a human in today's day and age. So that when they are felt that whatever they're doing is wrong when it's not, or whatever they're doing is not enough, and when you feel like you know you're in a situation and you're stuck and you can't move and whatever you do you cannot have any help because you're the one that's wrong in mm -hmm. whatever you're complaining about even if it's them not helping around in the house or spending time with them or taking them you know the responsibility off the shoulders like 
there was a, a lady that came to me, she's been married for over 10 years and um, had one son, even experienced miscarriages herself, and then eventually, you know, did have a second child. But the husband's always out, never there, not even present in the actual birth of her child. Mm -hmm. And she's a professional and, you know, even financially, he will not even support her. So she'd had to carry that burden for many years and not even the support of his family, you know, because they would not speak to him and say, look, you need to sort of like, you know, take mm -hmm. on the commitments that you promised. So she would have it completely. So when I had coaching with her, it wasn't the situation that changed, but it's the way in which she looked at the situation. It was different. It was different. And over the years, she's become so much stronger that even most people be like, oh, the only way I would come out of this is because if they came back to me and if they changed, it wasn't about the other person changing. It was about her changing. Mm -hmm. You know, it all comes from us and what she could do with her situation to make it something that she could build strength within herself, For know her, her value her and her worth, mm -hmm. and also, you know, she, unfortunately, we have to sometimes take responsibility to a certain extent to say, well, I'm going to not tolerate this as well, you know, because we also, you know, we, we basically get, you know, what we tolerate to a certain extent. So it's about building a strong mindset about, you know, what you need to do. Obviously, she took steps of moving out, you know, and doing what she needed to do. And I'm always advising people to never, ever break their marriages and to always bring homes together, no matter how bad the situation is, because it just needs work, it needs help, and it needs counseling or some sort of therapy in order for it to be worked out, because there's a lot more effects that can go on that could be detrimental if mm -hmm. you were to just separate, because you've got family, you've got children, yeah. you've got life you know, experiences and investment there. And it's not to say that these people are evil, it's that they're going through their own journey in this day and age, mm -hmm. that you, know, you don't want, you married that person for a reason, for example, and they're going through their own things and there's a miscommunication, there's a misunderstanding from both sides. Mm -hmm. So one needs to sort of um, take a step back and do what they need to do first and foremost for themselves to be strong for them and their children and then take steps as a couple to actually work through it. Mm -hmm. Even if it takes months and years, even if it's in separate houses, separate rooms, whatever it may be to have but make sure you do whatever it takes, even in Islam it says, right. take whatever steps it takes to actually make sure that you've tried everything to make things work. And when it comes to violence and when it comes to mental abuse, you can step away from it. You can actually move yourself, remove yourself from those situations because we do respond and react as well. Mm -hmm. So by learning st certain s tips and strategies and tools as to how to look at life and give it a new meaning and not take it personal, you can actually give whatever scenario that you were going through before a different light and a different meaning mm -hmm. in the same way, right. you know, with the same experiences, but actually be in control of it. Now we'll move on to the one-to-one -one segment with Sister Fahima and the anonymous guest. See you shortly. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much for joining us today, especially in today's session, which I know um, we're going to be talking about your experience with violence. Mm -hmm. So, could you mainly um, start us off by sort of telling us um, how does that um, experience have an impact on your life? Life. Mm -hmm. um, well, you're just never really the same after an experience like that. You know. I just think of how I was before this happened and I just used to be so carefree and relaxed about everything and how it just, you know, even now after so long, you know, there are just times during the day where just a thousand questions just run through my head over things that I shouldn't even be thinking about. and. The hardest thing is now I, I find it so difficult to interact with people and trust them. 
I, especially men, and I remember when it first happened, like every time a man would just be near me, I'd, I'd just flinch. And even now I just look at them and I just see them as a threat, even though rationally I know they, not all men are like the ones that hurt me, but I just can't make myself believe that. As it doesn't matter how many times I tell myself that it just doesn't fit for me. And then the hardest thing as well is it's just making people understand what I've been through. So often, you know, when I've tried to open up, people have just been very quick to like say, why didn't you do this? Or why did you do that? And it just sounds like they're just saying to me, you're stupid and you deserved what happened to you. <coughs> and are these scenarios that you're describing, are these recent events? Recent is in like in the last few years and it happened to me when I was quite young. I, I was a young independent woman who was enjoying, you know, living for herself and then this happened and just everything shattered around me. I didn't feel like I could go out. I didn't feel like I could do all the things that I could no I normally do. And where are you at this point in time? Um, do you know what happens a lot? I've healed a lot, but there is just some things that I'm still working on you know i hate to admit it but you know since this experience i i hate men and i know i shouldn't have that feeling i know that as a muslim woman i shouldn't be feeling such terrible feelings such as hatred but it's just so hard and you know the shaitan he, he just plays tricks on me and says like you know this has happened to you where's the justice in this you know they've just got away with what they've done and every day i have to remind myself that allah said that he is watching he has seen everything one day inshallah when i stand before him on the day of judgment he he will repay me for the evil that has been done to me and when you mention about um, the moments that you have felt a little bit of healing could you talk a little bit more about that process and maybe some ideas as to how that came? Um, it was definitely my religion that was the main part of my healing. I mean, I don't know what it'd be without the Ahlul Bayt, It's like Lady Fatima Zahra, alayhi salam, you know, I just look at her like a mother figure and like a guardian angel who's just always watching over me and whenever I've called out to her like I just feel like she's rushed to answer my answer my needs you know knowing that she faced very similar things to me knowing that the scars I feel or I've had she had them too knowing the fear that I feel you know knowing that she was afraid once it helps me so much and the fact that you know even though she was beaten and abused so badly she was able to come from behind that door and rush to protect her family i understand the pain <laughs> She rushed to protect her family. She showed from that moment that it doesn't matter what anyone does to you. You can survive it, you can get over it, you can fight back. Sister, it is something that you bring such great courage and you have to remember that what you've been through is is something that you know a lot of people will actually learn from and 
you're so brave to actually talk about this and actually help others in what you're experiencing, especially when you're relating it to Fatima to Sahara. And I think it's a great reminder for everyone. And I think that your pain is something that, inshallah, will hopefully, you know, be related to a lot of women out there so that they can take from this experience and move forward with it. That's, that's what Lady Fatima has taught me, that it doesn't matter what they do to you. It doesn't matter how tired you feel and how sick you are. People just not understand it. You just have to keep, you have to keep strong and you have to keep fighting. And I just hope that, I hope that my lady will be pleased with me. But. So how would you respond when people say that Islam is related to violence, especially against women? How would you respond to that? SubhanAllah, I, I just, I would say to them, you need to check your sources. It's nice to read a newspaper on the bus, it's nice to switch the news on at the end of the day, but you have to ask yourself, are these sources really reliable? I mean, you know, we think that we live in a free and democratic Western state, but the media is still a form of manipulating you. They only show you what they want to show you. And when it comes to, you know, particularly men being violent towards women, whenever it's a man who claims to be Muslim, they're very quick to report it. And the thing I would say is, you know, should we really be taking these men as representatives of our religion? When when you dig a little bit deeper, you actually find that these individuals that have hurt and abused these women, some of them have never even read the Quran before. Yeah. Some of them don't even know how to pray. Some of them go drinking and doing drugs and God knows what else every other night. You know, how can we say that these are examples of our deen? Surely it makes more sense to follow the example of the bringer and establisher of this religion, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. You know, when he began his message, when he began his prophethood, there were women in the city of Mecca, when, he heard the, when they heard the way that our Prophet spoke about women, how honoured and loved they were, and that the rights that she had, some of them just broke down in tears because they had never heard a message like that. They had always been told that they were just someone's property to be used and abused for whatever man wants to do with them. So, so I, Islam is a protection yes. rather than what people see and what people hear. And to you, what does it mean to you, Fatima to Zahra, with the attack that was on upon her? Uh -huh. She just reminds me that, you know, that there is a day of judgment, you know, because that is the thing that kept her going, you know. <sighs> when I think of Fatima to Sahara, when I think of her crying for her father, when I think of her push behind that door in so much pain when I think of her baby. I just remember that even though what happened to me was awful, I just shed even more tears over her because... But what can you take from this that is positive and that could you use in your daily life that would actually help you move forward from the situation? I just think the fact that not long after this terrible event happened, she stood in the court of tyrants and gave her khutbah and fadaqiyah, and she amazed 
everybody. And yes, she was broken. She was physically broken. She was emotionally broken. But she had that spirit of a lioness in her. Mm -hmm. And I swear when I think of that, I just feel... I just feel new. I just feel... I feel like I can get through anything with her help. So do you think you can maybe set yourself some goals with regards to it, some realistic goals for yourself in order to take the lessons of Fatima to Zahra and imply that with your experience and bring that to today and move forward? forward? Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> I think that I want to, sorry. It's fine, take your time. Yeah, I I think I just, the main thing I've learned from Our Lady Saviour from the Satin Alameen is to keep speaking out against injustice, mm -hmm. no matter how tired or, you know, broken I feel. And that is what I'm going to do. I know now that if anyone tries to treat me like that again, that I, I will... I will, I will speak out and I just hope that I can just retrain my way of thinking. Yes. I hope that I can just stop myself from dwelling on the past so much and just think of all the beautiful things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me now and the fact that I am stronger than before. And well, it's you're very brave as well as strong for sitting here and saying what you said. And I think that you've already highlighted all of this in the goals that you've already been able to accomplish by sitting here and speaking and being the voice of a lot of people that actually don't have that opportunity or, you know, they're not at that stage where you are. So I think that it's amazing and very brave. And um, inshallah, just to wish you all the luck and you know to continue doing what you're doing and the goals that you do set um, will not just be for yourself but hopefully for other people to sort of relate and relay it in their daily lives and just one other thing I'd like to say that um, everything that you've said was amazing but I do understand that that limiting belief and the feeling you have towards men in general inshallah you can open up the light knowing that you know is always the few out there that give the masses that horrible um, sort of you know stigma and it, it isn't everyone and inshallah you can move forward from this in a positive light and um, I just want to say thank you so much for sitting here and having this session with me and sharing the most you know really it's distressing and it's it's you know uncomfortable but you managed to pull through and i'm really really honored to be sitting next to you and hearing your story and have you share that for us today thank, thank you, you so much thank you thank you may god bless you assalamu alaikum thank, thank you so much sister Welcome back. That was, mashallah, intense one-to-one -one segment. And wow, Sister Fahima, you go through a lot to hear from people as a life coach. It is very intense, but um, you kind of develop a way of, you know, just being empathetic and making it about them. And that's what life coaching is about. So, you know, I can easily deal with these situations and it's very, very fulfilling and I'm you know really um, I feel like you know honored to be able to do something like this mm -hmm. to sort of assist people in this way um, the thing is though this is just a, s a small insight as to what people do go through on a daily basis right. and um, it's not to say that it's um, anything close to what Fatima to Sahara has ex you know experienced but we have to know that because she has strength that we actually possess that too and if we have belief like her and strength like her then you know this is what our 
teachings are. This is what we need to take from uh, away from it. So I feel that, you know, that's what gives me the courage to actually give hope to women, you know, not just from a life coaching perspective, but from the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, from the Islamic right. point of view. And I think that's really, really important for us to sort of like go back to the core of our values and our beliefs. Mm -hmm. And with women that have gone through that, yes, it's an extremely, extremely traumatic experience. And there are stages and phases that you're going to face. And, you know, um, but it can definitely be overcome and there are so much, so much, you know, tools that can be put in place and it's all about the way in which you look at it because a lot of people, you know, can bring so much goodness out of it. Mm. There's a lot that can be learnt from it. There's a lot that can be taken forward and it's what meaning you give to it. And, you know, are you going to let that situation, you know, control you or are you going to take charge and control it? And you're going to, you know, benefit from, you know, that, that learning. You know, as much as it, it's painful, as much as it can affect you, there are definitely ways to overcome that. And it's, it's really powerful to know that, you know, these things exist. And alongside our, our faith and our belief and these sort of tools and techniques, I think it's really important to go and seek advice. Right. That is very nice because not everyone could actually have this ability to talk to a person and advise them in a very good way and see what they want through and understand. Because many people nowadays, they don't understand your problem. No. They, they look at you and they just say, they judge, um, they judge you by mm -hmm. the outside and be like, like the girl in the segment where she was saying that um, people were getting away from me. They didn't know what I was going through. They didn't understand exactly. me. So there's a lot of people that do not understand and mashallah you have this ability to actually refer everything to Ahlul Bayt because who are we compared to exactly. what they went through so there there is so much support nowadays that we get like I mean Fatima Tazara Islam she had no, no one to go to exactly. uh, other than her father Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. and till today we don't understand what she went through so many people say no this didn't happen to Fatima Tazara or no she didn't miscarry or no this is too much don't make it too much Fatima Tazahra, this didn't happen to her, but they don't know what exactly happened to her. Just like how some ladies today tell you that people are not understanding what's happening to me. I mean, um, they have, people generally will deny things that happen, but they have their own reasons for doing that. Maybe there's embarrassment, maybe that they don't want it to be highlighted, that these things that do exist in our communities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not to condemn anyone for their opinions, but I think that their opinions come from their own experiences as well. Mm -hmm. So what I want to sort of talk to um, about life coaching is that, you know, women nowadays can actually speak to somebody in a safe environment, right. knowing that there is a place to go and they're not going to be judged and they're not going to be looked upon in any particular way except for it's about them and it's about them moving forward and taking their experiences and bringing it into something more positive and it's really something that you know we need as women to know that we can take control even in whatever situation we're in because obviously that happened to Fatima to Zahra even in the worst situation you know it did not stop her mm -hmm. and she went forward and that's yeah. what we've got to do is never give up there is hope and Allah does not put anything on us unless we can handle it. So we need to remember these basics and actually practice that because when we are, you know, when we are sort of like, you know, given these tragedies and challenges to sort of mm -hmm. been to sort of like, you know, experience, we always like, you know, why us or we cannot cope with it, but we can. Yeah, Allah true. gives it to us because it's a test and because he knows you can do it and you can do good with it. Mm -hmm. So that's he what we need to, to remember. We react to it. Yes, Some it's all everything. Up. Yes, everything mm -hmm. is a test. We've got to keep remembering that. You know, in life, it's not about, you know, just doing the rituals of salah and, you know, going to um, ziyara and pilgrimage and charity. Yeah. It's about what we do in between that. That's true. How we treat people, how we are treated and how we're going to respond to that and react. And building our characters and having the virtues. Don't say that that happened before and we don't have the same. In fact, we can do much more, like you mentioned. We have much more support. We have much more knowledge. We have the wisdom we have people that we can turn to mm -hmm. and now we've got people outside the community's life like you know sort of therapy and whatever yeah. else there is and that's so a lot of support that we're that getting is a lot nowadays. of support so yeah. don't be afraid and you can turn whatever situation that is negative into a positive and you can bring something you know where someone else can be not you know in the same situation and you can give them hope right so that's what it's really about uh, that was very fantastic and it's very lovely to have you and have a nice conversation with you welcome uh, inshallah pleasure. see you next time uh, thank you, dear viewers, for watching. If you've been affected by the following topics raised in this episode, please contact your local GP or Fahima Muhammad on coachfm1 at hotmail.com.
वज्रयना